This episode is powered by Safety FM. The Crucial Talks Podcast with your host, Mike Saddam. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Saddam, and welcome back to the Crucial Talks Podcast. Today's guest is John Voris. John has written a book called Discover the Power That Drives Your Personality. The whole premise of the book and what John does for people is he really helps us understand what makes us tick. And I think that's really important because, as John says, this can determine our success or failure in work, relationships, and our own personal well being. Now, John's a philosopher, a writer, and a psychological researcher. His book is a result of over 20 years of application and 16 years of research. This should be a really valuable conversation about what makes us tick. So without further ado, let's welcome John Forrest to the podcast. How are you today, John? Doing great, Mike, and uh, thank you for having me. No, it sounds pretty exciting. I love the premise of the book and, and what it's about. But before we start, can you give us a quick introduction about your background and what really drove you to where you are today, trying to help people understand themselves better? Oh, yes. Um, uh, back years ago when I was going to college, uh, I was going to be a, uh, wanted to get into law, at least I thought so. And I needed a part-time job. And I would take classes on uh, uh, sales, uh, uh, cold calling, and I decided that'd be the way to go. So I'd find a part-time job cold calling. I went through seven companies. I was fired four times, and I quit three times. I just got too tired of being humiliated, and I always went back to gas stations and warehouses, and I gave it up. I graduated from college, and I decided not to go into law and bought a delicatessen, and when I sold it, uh, the vendor says, well, why don't you uh, 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 sell for me, and I thought that'd be a good idea, and so I didn't look for anything else, and it was going to be wholesale, but then he calls me up while my deli is up for sale and says, um, oh, by the way, I have to file bankruptcy. But don't worry about it. We're going to go back to cold call door-to-door sales, which is something that I had just failed seven times. And now I have a wife and child as a support. So to say the least, I was terrified. Uh, what I did notice is in all the classes I took, uh, they didn't speak a great deal about what language is and what it does. And also, I want to stop and say that a lot of these uh, self-help courses really do work for a lot of people. I just slipped through the cracks. And so I wanted to find out where that, how, if I could fill that gap. And I learned that there's a great deal of information from Europe. And so I began to study European psychology and philosophy and they provided me with the foundation that filled that gap. And then I was able to uh, perform door-to-door cold call sales for over 20 years. And I did very well. And I sold 12 to 14 out of 20 uh, for that entire period of time. Well, I find that pretty interesting. So do you think the the focus on that European psychology and philosophy helped you when you were dealing with people? Oh, yes. The idea is people are really run by what things mean, and uh, and we're all uh, uh, focused on the symbolism. And that, you you speak about, uh, I think, a podcast, uh, a couple of podcasts ago, you spoke about meaning and symbolism. And uh, symbols are what really does run us, and they're somewhat of a stereotype. Uh, But that really uh, is the foundation of who we are. And um, that's where I came up with the idea of uh, the four uh, symbols that really do govern our life. Uh, and also stems from uh, Carl Jung, uh, many other psychologists, philosophers, etc. So what I did is I used these uh, to understand wh- what people are. The way I did that is when you buy something, you're buying something that you like. And if you like it, it's because it resonates with who you are. So why not look at the things around you and find out who you are? Once I do that, then I find your motivation. Then I speak to your motivation when I start describing what I'm selling. And that's exactly what I did. But from that, I learned so much more over 20 years 
that that had an impact that your motivation, your primary motivation, really controlled everything from relationships, business, uh, personal, it does it, how you uh, raise children, where you live, everything. So it sounds like you kind of tested it out on your own in sales and that it made sense there and it actually impacted your relationship with the people you were selling to in a positive way. But what you're telling me now is that what you've also figured out is that it's not restricted just to sales. It impacts relationships, business life, personal life. So what it, it sounds to me is, does this have an impact on every facet of life, including well, really including maybe what we do as managers, what we do with other, with coworkers, what we do in our families. Absolutely. Um, what I discovered, and it does come from Europe, uh, the human mind only has one need. That is the perpetual need to express their authentic identity. And we do it through objects, people, and events. And that was true uh, for those 20 years, but more importantly, those are universal and they're absolute. And you can find it in any country, any time in history. Well, so this need to exhibit your identity authentically, what is that really, what does that drive people to do? So what I discovered was um, there are four life themes, love, justice, wisdom, and power. And this has been written about since uh, uh, the Egyptians, uh, 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 d writings. Um, it's also been repeated um, by uh, through anthropology. And there's a woman uh, who wrote on this very topic uh, that she discovered that the shamans around the world focused on four aspects of human motivation. And, of course, they used mother, uh, visionary, teacher, and warrior. Well, but that was transformed years later into love, justice, wisdom, and power. And what that means is we, all, we have all four, but there's one that will dominate, and that's the life theme. And so the life theme is an, it's like an empty vessel. It gives you guidance, but you have to fill it. It's like you fill in the content. And so that moves you forward through life and really does give you structure to all your decision-making. And you could see it in, right where you live. You could see it in your house. You can see it where you work. There's a pattern there, and it is connected to your authentic uh, motivation. And what I do is I call that your uh, uh, starter kit, you might say. Okay, so we're talking about the life theme and the fact that it's, you know, we have these four virtues, love, justice, wisdom, power, that give guidance and structure to our decision making. But how how does our life theme, whether it's, you know, for me, it might be okay. wisdom or power um, or love, whatever it happens to be that's guiding me, how does that actually impact the decisions that okay. we're making? So uh, one of my clients uh, was a love theme. And uh, love themes, they are the humanitarians uh, for us. And they have a, a keen awareness of the needs of others, and they empathize, and um, uh, they are always thinking of how people feel, and that is what they, they truly feel intuitively. So I had this one uh, uh, client, Mary, and uh, she loved her job, but there, there was a problem with it. She was working in a dealership in accounting, and what happened is she was very stressed. She worked with payroll and DMV, and she processed dealers, uh, trades, et cetera. And there was a lot of problems uh, in, in dealing with all these people. And so she really didn't know why. She loved accounting. But she didn't know why she was having a hard time. Once she realized that she was, she was a love thing, she found that the problem was the stress. She cannot, couldn't deal with the conflict. So she left, and she became an accountant for uh, farm equipment bookkeeping and uh, been happy ever since. Uh, I have another uh, gentleman. His name was Ben. Um, he was motivated by my call theoretical knowledge, uh, but knowledge, wisdom. And he worked in the government, and he uh, did budgets and uh, cost analysis, et cetera, but he was very bored. 
and he, he didn't have human contact. And so because he didn't have human contact, he decided to leave and he sold uh, medical equipment. And, he, and it was very detailed um, and it worked beautifully with his personality and with what really motiv motivated him. Uh, then we have uh, justice people. I had a Jerry, he's motivated by detailed harmony. He was an attorney and he, he worked for a corrupt firm and that was his problem because uh, uh, the justice people are always looking for balance and harmony and that wasn't there. So he moved out of that position and went for a nonprofit. He's been happy ever since. Another one is um, uh, a person who was driven by power and but they were physical empowerment and uh, this person was a nurse but she was frustrated because people were operating insufficiently and that's what a power person does they really uh, cling close to rules regulations and expectations and they're very responsible so she, uh, she left uh, to do a care home for the elderly now she had total control and everything was fine so you see the love, justice, wisdom, and power is with us all the time. We have all four, but one dominates. And the, these four dominated these four people. And once they see it, then they're able to make the change. So what they learn is there's really nothing to fix. There's only something to be aware of. Well, that makes a lot of sense because say, say we're in a, a work environment or we're in a relationship and we're living our day-to-day -day lives, but there's something gnawing at us or some kind of stress or some kind of pressure. There's some kind of anxiety. There's something that is truly bothering us. What it sounds like from the, the stories you give, and I, I love stories if you listen by any of my other podcasts because it really drives how people feel and our emotional decision-making. So these stories are great. And it really makes me think, with these stories you're talking about, it seems like everybody, the, the common theme is everybody had something that was making them anxious, making them stressed, making them unhappy. So if, if the position they're in or the situation they're in doesn't match up with what their primary life theme is, whether it's love, justice, wisdom, or power, what is it then do, that people really need? Because it seems like this mismatch can cause a lot of anxiety and stress and unhappiness. So what is it that people need then in their lives to, to transcend that, that issue they're dealing with? One area is to separate the right problems from the wrong problems. This is a very big issue. Um, let's say uh, the, for the Wright brothers who invented the airplane, um, uh, the airplane crash is the right problem to have, believe it or not. The wrong problem is to go to the hangar and the airplane is missing. Why? Because one actually contributes to what they're up to in life. The other one is not. And so what we do is we, we're here to resolve issues and problems. And so uh, a love person is out in the world looking for harm, you might say. Wisdom people are out looking for people who need knowledge. The justice people are out looking for what's unfair, and power people are looking for the powerless or the weak because they have to make up for that. They're here to balance that out. So once you see that, uh, now I'll give you an example I use in a, in a workshop. So I wake up in the morning, I say, I'm going to shave today. That's going to be my goal. That's my achievement. And you say, well, that's not, that's not all that important. And I said, well, yeah, but uh, I had uh, it really hurt my arm. It was in a sling, and I just had the sling taken off yesterday, and this is the first day I'll be able to lift my arm high enough to shave. So now I have a somewhat of achievement. So you see, the problems we have actually define achievement and goal. If there's no problems there, it isn't an achievement. But it has to correspond with our life theme. So, again, when we're confronted with something like the Wright brothers opening up the doors and the plane's gone, that's not, that's not what we want. We want to avoid those as much as possible. But we have to admit we are accepting. We are purposely uh, uh, selecting the issues that correspond to what our, our life theme is trying to resolve. So, 
we are looking for people who are in harm's way because we love people. And without those, we wouldn't have a destiny. We wouldn't have a purpose. Do you see that? I do. And it really sounds like it goes back to that need for authentic identity. So maybe right. people do realize, hey, we, there's something going on in my life here. And maybe they talk to you or they, they figure out that their life theme isn't really matching up with how they're showing up. So then it sounds like, okay, well, they need to show up kind of in congruity with their life theme. So in order to do that, sounds like that means they have to show up authentically and they have to express their authentic identity based on that life theme. So how do they learn to do that? I mean, say you're in a career for 15 or 20 years and you build up these habits that are making you miserable because they're not in alignment. How do you then learn to express your, your authentic identity? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, there was another client of mine I assessed, and uh, believe it or not, he was a foreman, the floor foreman to a chocolate factory. And all he could do is complain about everything and everybody. And so when I took him through the process of showing him the difference between, well, first of all, I showed him what his life theme was, and it was justice. The next thing I showed him was the, uh, uh, the problems that he took on when he took that job. And that's what he's here for. That is his job. And that there, he was hired uh, to move this company forward in, into a profit. And, and then he selected those problems. So here's the difference. When you think that problems are imposed on you, that creates the anxiety. But when you turn it around and say, wait a minute, you actually selected those problems when you took the job. Now you have ownership. Now you have responsibility, and that's usually how they were able to get around that. If it was really serious, like the examples I just gave you, they're going to have to move on and do something else. Or they'll, they'll, in other words, they'll stay, like my one person stayed in the legal profession, but really got it. He needs to uh, move on to, uh, let's say, a, a, a nonprofit uh, to get away from uh, the conflicts in the previous firm. Uh, that happens quite a bit with my uh, uh, justice people. Well, it sounds like then context is hugely important because you could take one of your clients, put them in the exact same situation, but because you're able to change the lens, they're looking through how they're viewing that situation. You're changing their context and that context that's more aligned with their life theme will actually help them reduce stress, perform better. It doesn't really change the problem, but it sounds like it changes how they look at the problem. Yeah, if I say, if you have a problem and uh, it's been imposed on you, you have resentment, uh, maybe uh, upset, anger, et cetera. But when I turn it around and say, wait a minute, those are the problems that you were hired to resolve. That's why you're important. That's what gives you validation these people really do turn around and they never looked at it that way. And just like my shaving example, if you didn't have the problems, you wouldn't have achievements because they define what you achieve and, and what your goals are. And uh, that shift does make a difference. Um, and in fact, I have, uh, uh, when I go through this process of, uh, uh, of identity, of, uh, of assessing them, I've never had, believe it or not, I've been doing this since, 2000, well, formally since 2013, uh, I've never had two people uh, come out the same. That's how, how uniquely focused this process is. So in the end, they really know what, uh, how they learn. They learn um, uh, how they get along with people and why. They learn what gives them purpose and meaning uh, and also gives them a reason to look at self-validation differently. Where do they get self-validation? Uh, self then also, where do they go or should they avoid going? So uh, uh, that would really cause a conflict for self-validation. It's like, like, like uh, uh, driving a car at night and you've got no lights on and there's ruts. You're just going to fall right into each one. What this does is turn the lights on. The ruts are still there, but you're going to move around them. And that's what my people do. Yeah, I like that. I like the fact that you're giving people 
the lens they need to view their situation differently, to view themselves differently, to figure out some of this stuff that will help them in their day-to-day lives and their work lives and their relationships. And I find this really fascinating that we kind of started with how you got there and that your focus has been on symbolism and how these life themes, love, justice, wisdom, and power really give people that feeling they have when they're making decisions. And, and I like the way you put it, that it gives them a structure for decision making. And that we talked about how important that is. Now, as we wrap this up, you talked earlier about symbols, about objects, and how important those are. And we just brushed over it. So as we kind of wrap this up, how do those objects that really surround us, how do, how do they express our authentic identity and, and how do we use those things to, to help us? What are they and what should we look for and how do we use them? Well, now that uh, takes uh, my book, uh, that takes my book to go through that. Uh, I also do seminars and workshops, but uh, for example, if you walked into, well, I don't have to do it that way. I could do it, uh, let's say you walked into a bank I mean, when you walk into a bank and you have a whole different sense of time, then you walk into a flower shop and you have a different sense of time. And everywhere you go, you have a different sense of time based on what's physically present and how time is formed by that. It may sound complicated, but I actually taught this to my daughter when she was 14. Then you look at uh, uh, back to people and their jobs. You look at what uh, what objects are around them that they use every day constantly. So let's say you walk into a room where there's nothing but books. Fine. Then you look at the type of books, the name of the books, and that'll tell you what this person is up to. Probably a wisdom. Uh, then you have so, uh, somewhere uh, where somebody's an architect. They're in design, and designing takes two uh, aspects. One is uh, the idea of what it means to be human, that, uh, that aesthetic sense. And, of course, factual, uh, because th- they're dealing with gravity. They're dealing with uh, uh, how, to, how to build. So they put the two together. That's the justice people. And so you find these things in rooms, offices, buildings, banks, restaurants. Every time you go into a place, you have a different feel. So that gives you an idea, at least, of how this works. But then what I do is I listen to the language they use. And people do have a very specific lexicon, love, justice, wisdom, power. And they'll do those repeatedly in uh, whatever theme they're trying to express. So uh, it, it really, it's not one thing or two things or three. It's really, uh, it's, ho- it's holistic. It's all that's present. But you could, I would be able to get a good idea of who someone was before I even met them. And I did that because of knowing th- what the symbols of buildings are, streets are. Walk into the office and uh, see the people and how they interacted and who looked like they were in authority and who wasn't. And, and I, te- I always tested it. And so um, basically that's how it works. But again, I have uh, uh, an assessment that I do, and also I have the book, Discover the Power That Drives Your Personality. It's a little more complex, but it's really easy to learn. Well, and I think a lot of us that listen to this podcast do what we do. I mean, there's managers and CEOs and safety officers and people on the front line all listening. But I really think that makes sense to people because there's not one person you meet that's that's the same as another person you meet, right? I love the fact that you talked about this holistic approach because everybody is different. I mean, you said it yourself in your experience, you haven't had two people match. It's always a little bit different. There's always something different. One person is the same as another. Mm -hmm. And I find that really fascinating. And I know there's a lot more out there for people to learn. I know you've probably sparked a lot of interest. So if people do want to get a hold of you, get a hold of your book, that sort of thing, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, there's, uh, you can go, uh, my, my site is uh, uh, John Voris, V as in Victor, O-R-I-S dot com. And you go to uh, Authentic Identity Assessments if you want to get an assessment. And then on Amazon is Discover the Power that Drives Your Personality. Well, that's great. I'm going to put a link to your website and to the Amazon link for your for your book. So if anybody out there, if you want to get a hold of John, if you want to get a hold of the book, just 
go to the show notes, go ahead and click on those links. They'll take you right there. Again, John, this has been a fascinating discussion. I think it it hits home for a lot of people because I think there's a lot of people out there that may be unhappy in life and, and unhappy in their jobs or unhappy in their careers, unhappy in a relationship. Maybe it's due to the fact that their life theme isn't really in agreement with how they're living their life. I find it absolutely fascinating. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk to us about it. Oh, uh, you're more than welcome. All right, everybody. But if you had a, enjoyed that conversation, just like I did with John, if you get a chance, I'd love for you to visit me at www.crucialtalks.com. If you need to get a hold of me, connect with me via email, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, whatever works for you. Have a great week. And remember, if we want to understand behavior, we need to understand what drives people. Please review, share, and subscribe to the Crucial Talks podcast. Visit crucialtalks.com.